Okay, so we've just got to the last little bit of Socrates' speech at the symposium. Um, and he's just been quoting Diotima, who was saying that um, the only way that mortals can become immortal and therefore possess everlasting good and beauty is by producing. Um, and that could be through reproduction, so producing children, but also through producing art. So uh, she mentioned Homer and Hesiod as writers who produced uh, beautiful works of art, beautiful um, stories, and therefore they've become immortal. Um, and she said that the the best way to impregnate yourself in a kind of weird way is to impregnate your soul with virtue and wisdom. Um, and then she's going to sort of talk a little bit more specifically about uh, these beautiful forms. This is the idea of the philosophical forms, uh, which is what every philosopher who is uh, studying love and wisdom uh, should be focused on. Now, we've already established that love is the love of beauty and um, good things. So here, Diotima, through Socrates' voice, starts talking about um, what kind of beautiful things you should love. Um, and she says that at first, when you're young, uh, you visit beautiful forms. What she means by that is you see beautiful things. So that might be a beautiful man, a beautiful woman, a beautiful object. Um, and at first, you just love that thing, to love one such form only. Uh, so let's say you are an ancient Greek man and you find another beautiful man and you fall in love with that man and you focus only on loving that man and you appreciate the beauty of that man. And that then leads to beautiful thoughts. So she says fair thoughts. Um, but then, slightly strangely, and this is how it all becomes a bit philosophical, is she says that because you appreciate the beauty of that one man, you then appreciate the beauty of men in general. She says beauty of one form is akin to the beauty of another. So you notice that because one man is beautiful, other men are beautiful. And eventually, beauty in every form is the same. Um, so because you've appreciated the beauty of a beautiful man, you realise that all men are beautiful. And then, as always, everything goes inside into the mind rather than focusing on the physical. And she says that you must realise that the beauty of the mind is more honourable than the beauty of the outward form. So you start off by appreciating the beauty of one thing and then you appreciate multiple things. And then you realise that actually focusing on inner beauty is even more important. And she kind of summarises this at the bottom of page 17. Uh, you shouldn't be like a servant in love with the beauty of one youth or man or institution, himself a slave, mean and narrow-minded, but drawing towards and contemplating the vast sea of beauty. You will create many fair and noble thoughts in boundless love of wisdom. So you shouldn't just love one thing, you should worship the beauty of all things and realise that there is beauty everywhere. And uh, specifically, you should take that beauty inwards. So not the beauty of the physical, but the beauty of the mental. And therefore, this is the boundless love of wisdom. So it's kind of a, a gradual step-by-step -step process. You've gone from beauty of a thing to the beauty of all things, to the beauty of the insides of those things, the minds, the souls, the wisdom of those things. And she carries on pretty much saying the same stuff. She just kind of explains it in a little bit more detail. Um, and she says that a, a, a proper lover, a true lover uh, of wisdom, so someone who wants to impregnate their soul with wisdom and virtue, uh, moves from the beauties of earth and mount upwards for the sake of that other beauty. So you start with the physical things and gradually you appreciate uh, the beauty of divine things and mental things and things that you can't necessarily see and this is what she describes as absolute beauty now this isn't just the idea of appreciating someone inside and out it's not like you fancy someone physically and then you also appreciate their personality it's a bit kind of more philosophical than that it's appreciating the mind and the wisdom and the virtue and not just of one person but of everything and she says, and she sounds like she's getting quite excited here, what if man had eyes to see the true beauty, the divine beauty, I mean pure and clear and unalloyed, not clogged with the pollutions 
of mortality. So she believes that there is something um, utterly divinely beautiful out there. Um, and this doesn't get clogged by pollutions of mortality. So it can't be um, a mortal, it can't be a being that's that's going to die. Um, and as we've kind of established uh, in lots of our studies of philosophy, including Seneca and also in our poetry with Sappho and Ovid, mortals make a lot of mistakes and there is definitely no such thing as a perfectly beautiful mortal um, because mortals by definition have flaws so what she's saying here is you start with a uh, kind of a spark of beauty by finding a mortal beautiful but eventually that should take you on to appreciate immortal beauty and divine beauty now she doesn't say explicitly what this is um and to be honest it's kind of impossible to explain what ultimate wisdom and ultimate beauty is but the her point is that there is something even more beautiful beyond everything we can see in front of us and this to her uh, is not only what kind of the most pure form of love is which is loving divine beauty and loving things beyond the physical but it's also what uh, wisdom is it's what philosophy is and philosophy is just greek for the love of wisdom um, and that is the conclusion that Diotima reaches. And at the end, um, Socrates says, this is what Diotima says to me. Um, and he says that he tries to persuade others of this. Uh, and he says that in the attainment of this end, human nature will not easily find a helper uh, better than love. Um, because the only way that you can reach divine beauty, uh, divine wisdom, um, seeking what is beyond um, the earth. Um, the only way that you can reach that kind of divine philosophical point is through love because it has to start with you falling in love with a beautiful object um, and that to him is what love is. So pretty complicated stuff, pretty edgy weird philosophical stuff um, but hopefully this make some sort of sense uh, with regards to Socrates's nice long-winded speech in the symposium.